literally just Kevin Sorbo. Hey, Kevin, uh, you want to improvise a Jewish person's name? Moishi Hanukkah Bagel. Yes. Moishi Hanukkah Bagel. <laughs> I, I will tell you, Heath, I want to congratulate you for coming up with something more stereotypical than the name. Because as I was watching the movie, I tried to write the joke you just delivered so expertly. And I was like, nope, Chaim Rosenzweig is funnier than anything <laughs> I'm going to come up with. All of the with. other ones, yes. No. <laughs> Lots of my friends are. That's his last name. Lots of my yeah. friends are. Funny. <laughs> Some of my best friends are. Minister Funny New York Man. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, or else we get the hose again. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. This is the perfect movie. It's it is sort of perfect. peak us in so many ways, yeah. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? In bliss, Noah. Complete. <laughs> Ready to pass from this world. <laughs> so. I can die happy. And speaking of bliss, I should point out that this is May, which means it's Matreon, the time of the year where we remind you to head over to patreon.com slash godawful and help us keep doing the show. When you become a patron, you get instant access to over 80 secular bonus episodes with a new one coming every month. Plus, you get access to our annual pajama party live stream. And depending on your donation level, Eli might even fuck your dad. There's a lot of great stuff going on there. Be sure to check the show notes. Instant access. <laughs> 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 fuck yeah. <laughs> To your dad. Eli fucks your dad. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Okay. Yep. So with that out of the way, <laughs> tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Left Behind Rise of the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. It's the story of how Tucker Carlson was right about everything he ever said ever. <laughs> Released in January of this year. That's when the movie <gasps> came out. Yes, yeah, just I'm amazing so the timing this. on this. I'm so happy that we didn't watch it then. I'm so happy that we waited until after Tucker got fired for this review. Perfect. Right? Oh. Look, credit where credit's due. We've watched a lot of pseudo-prophecy movies. This one kind of nails it. Yeah, <laughs> at least that part. If you get the exact opposite of a prophecy, that is nailing it in some <laughs> exactly, sense. Right, exactly. They don't know, but... And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you've watched... 11 apocalypses minimum oh. and you thought the genre had nothing to surprise you with <laughs> buckle in Bucky because <laughs> left behind two is coming for you. Yeah. No, this one's got a lot going to it. But so here's the thing we also have to warn you about right off the bat. We've watched at least a dozen rapture movies where the plan was obviously to drum up interest with the first movie and then hope to use that movie's success to finance a much more grandiose vision of the second movie. This is the first time we've seen that like done with movie two in a trilogy, right? Where the budget obviously dropped like a stone between one and two, and they're trying to do that again. They don't have those sweet, <laughs> sweet Nick Cage dollars anymore. No, interestingly enough, I saw on the IMDb trivia for this, the budget for this movie was the same as Nick Cage's salary for the first one. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Oh, that's why the budget is so good on this movie. Got it. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, that's why it's so high budget. Man. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best to be the worst at? Oh, I got to go with best, best. Kevin Sorbo had to get vaccinated to do yes! this movie. Like what? so angrily. Yeah. So Sorbo tried to go to Calgary in Canada where this was shot. And Canada was like, nope, absolutely not. You will need to get vaccinated. So he eventually agreed, like, in a huff to get a shot in his arm so that he could shoot the movie. Yeah, he got vaccinated to make his anti-vaccine movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now his cum is worthless on Getter's pure cum That's no, You're right. It's it's true. Not that even, is true, yeah. It's not even Caucasian anymore. All right. So I was going to go with best worst narration for an idiot. So Ooh. Kevin Sorbo <laughs> made this movie. And Kevin Sorbo is, of course, an idiot. So, like, constantly he had to, he must have been saying to the screenwriters, well, sh like, how are people going to know what's going on? And the screenwriters would be like, because it's going on. 
right? <laughs> and he's like, I really think we need a narrator to come in and explain every single thing that we're seeing at all times throughout the movie, never once adding any real context. And they were like, fine, man, you're the fucking director, apparently. <laughs> oh, yeah, you are, baby. The movie's yeah, still going. Are. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, narrator. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I, of course, am going to take the easiest... And the most glorious one, I'm going to go with best worst, getting distracted by your own psychopathy. Yes. So, <laughs> as I hinted, the absolute nutbags who made this movie could not stop talking about whatever loop-de-loop -loop bullshit conspiracy theory was on their mind that week while they were writing this movie about their own 2,000 plus year old conspiracy theory <laughs> about the end of the world. <laughs> They got distracted by their own modern bullshit from their ancient bullshit. And I loved it with my whole heart. And I will personally fund 11 more movies in this uh, series. Yes. I think there were 14 books. So. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got a familiar trip over unfamiliar ground ahead of us, so we're going to take a quick break and figure out how the hell one packs for that. But we'll be back in a minute with all the conspiracy bullshit du jour that is... Left Behind, Rise of the Antichrist. You hear it, right? Again, no. Hey, guys, what you doing? Eli's trying to convince me to buy his expensophones. Expensophones? Yeah, they're the best. Nope, not the best, just more expensive. Look, Eli, if you want great sound equipment without breaking the bank, why don't you just try Raycon? What's Raycon? say it like that. Raycon is premium audio at the perfect price point, so you can listen to what you want when you want without breaking the bank. Oh, yeah? How so? Raycon's mission is to prove that you shouldn't have to pay an arm and a leg for quality sound and essential smart tech listening features. Heck, you can even get a pair and a spare and still pay less than you would with some of those other more big-name tech brands out there. Like expensive phones, I see. Yeah, it's true. Raycon sent us a pair of their earbuds to try when they first became a sponsor. And I love that they're sweat and water resistant. Your, your ears sweat? Noticeably sweat. Yes, they do. Okay, but like expensive phones come with awareness mode and tap functions. Do Raycons have those? They sure do. That's why I, Heath Enright, personally endorse them as a product. All right, guys, I'm sold. Where can I get a pair? Go to buyraycon.com slash gam today to get 15% off your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash gam to score 15% off. Buyraycon.com slash gam. All right. Now, all I got to do to be a super fan is get Ray J to talk about him in a turtleneck sweater. I don't think he's going to do that. Well, he should. All right, guys, we, we've been in this room trying to write Left Behind 2 for four and a half hours, and we keep getting distracted talking about like the so-called COVID-19 virus. COVID, more like Novid, right? Thank you. D Dave, that's Hoax. as hilarious as it is apropos. But come on, guys, Thank we got to write something for the movie. Right, right, right. Sorry, sorry. So um, everyone's vanished, right? Did they, though? Yeah, actually, great question. Thank no, you. No, that's not, though, guys. They did. I, like, in the movie, they did, though. Right. right. In our movie. Mm. But, well, but, but the government used that to control people, which I think we can all agree is just like, just like today. today. Yes. My cell phone's made out of lead. Wait, wait, guys. What? Don't you see? This is the movie. Wait, you mean, like, our inability to focus on anything except our political agenda. That's the, the movie. Exactly. And, and you're saying we just work in the lady faced horse lions. I mean, Anthony Fauci, just like a horse locust. Yes, he is. I've always said that. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to start off with meeting this fucking world's least useful narrator while we look at aerial <laughs> shots of New York City. Yeah, the opening lines of the movie are, with God, all things are possible. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, except for fitting your logo on the screen, I guess. <laughs> yeah. A little formatting, huh? Although Kevin Sorbo can replace Nicolas Cage. So maybe <laughs> yeah. there's a good argument for God in there. And that was my first thought. It was like, anything's possible. Nick Cage being in the second movie? No, okay, not anything. Yeah. <laughs> 
so yes, yeah, so we're getting these aerial shots. We've got a news reporter. This is fucking Bucker Carlson. We'll we'll meet him a little later. <laughs> his name is actually Buck. I wrote that immediately, like right away when they made, mentioned his name. I'm like, oh, it's Bucker Carlson. But then they like so obviously made him Tucker Carlson for the rest of the fucking movie. He might as well be Buck Schmarlson, like in yeah. the script. It's so <laughs> right. close. Yes. It's clearly him. So, yeah, but he's talking about basically he's just filling us in on everything that happened since the last movie. Now, this is technically a sequel to the airplane one that Nick Cage was in, although there are no returning cast members. Right? Not a no. single fucking one. Yeah, not even the minor characters. Nope. You'd think you'd get an extra, right? Just out of out of spite. You'd be like, all right, fine. What's the chick that played Chloe in the first one doing? Give me a fucking <laughs> break, right? But yeah, yes, but she's doing a very important community theater piece, Noah. And washing not her hair. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so apparently fucking schmucks, schmuse or whatever is running a retrospective on the last six months for all the people who just came out of comas since the goddamn rapture. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, narration tells us here. A closed mind is not an easy thing to pry open. I wrote in my notes, a movie that's its second reboot of a book series about how the world is going to end any minute. <laughs> yep. Right. Yes. Mm. Yeah. The narrator's telling us about the rapture that happened like six months ago. Mm -hmm. And he says something impossible happened. And nope. No, it didn't. No, that's true. <laughs> and the other thing he's telling us is that there was plenty of warning and mm -hmm. he means the Bible. <laughs> like, right. Yep. That's it. We were just supposed to read the Bible and learn about the rapture that's, that's not in the fucking Bible. Right. Well, and then he's just like, you know, even after the rapture happened, most people in our country acted like it wasn't the Christian rapture. They were looking at it like, oh, that must be fucking Venus reflected off of some swamp gas or some bullshit like that. Because you know how people are. <laughs> you know how they get. Yeah. Which is so weird because... In a movie that, spoiler alert, will spend a lot of time doing a COVID metaphor, they didn't pick up on this one. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so the, so the narrator is like, most people just denied that it all happened, but some people just tried to figure out how to make a buck off of it. People tried to profit from the rapture. Can you fucking imagine those people? <laughs> Said the Christian rapture movie <laughs> in the first fucking scene. Oh, Second please. reboot. Yes, yes. Of a book series. <laughs> right. So, but that ra that scene wraps up. And then we cut to Kevin Sorbo watching Bucker Carlson on the news. Okay. Can we talk about Kevin Sorbo's physical appearance in this movie? If you must. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's he cool to make is, fun of people's looks. Yeah, he ahead. is the ninth month of a bad breakup looking shabby in this <laughs> film. And the fact that he's the director makes it even sadder. He's in like an old... You ever see like an old man who always wears their suit and tie and you see him at work all the time, like he's a school principal or something. And then you see him outside and he's wearing like a sweatshirt. And you're like, oh, my God, what happened to you, Principal Jenkermans? That's how Kevin Sorbo looks the entire <laughs> film. Yeah, he looks like I, I believe he said long ago that he looks like old leather. And that's right. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like a catcher's mitt. Yeah. From like your dad from like the 40s or whatever. Yeah. The narrator cuts in and he's like, I was never a big fan of Rayford Steele. And then we all had to pause to laugh for seven <laughs> minutes as we recall <laughs> that the protagonist of this book series is named Rayford Steele. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Again, I laughed every single time they mentioned yes, Rayford me Steele. Too, me too. It's so silly. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well I call him Grenade for Bear Trap or something. Yeah. It's, yeah. Gunfight Bear Crunch. <laughs> now, Platinum Bleeding Edge Bazooka <laughs> fucking. What's another metal? Truck nuts. Yeah. Truck nuts are metal. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Now, he, of course, is going through the closet, smelling his wife's old clothes, <laughs> thinking about the first movie. He's like sexually caressing his dead wife's dress with his yeah. hand, like yeah. very clearly doing like a Norman Bates scenario oh, in no, his head. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, yeah, no, the movie definitely is giving us a look. Your naggy Christian wife was right, and now all you have left are her dresses to sniff. Aren't you ashamed? Yeah. Well, right, and and just in case that wasn't clear, the narrator comes in and says, "Now, just so you know, your Christian wife was right, and now all you have left is her dresses to sniff. Aren't you ashamed?" Right? Like, like he is absolutely <laughs> just describing the image, like that thing they give for like. Like for Tim to watch movies with. Exactly. Yeah. The hearing him. And they do that for the whole movie. Like I was, you know, hearing this. I was like, all right, you're trying to make your point at the beginning. But they do this throughout. It's just yes. a post-rapture scolding by the narrator of atheists. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And the atheist character always being like, you told me to bet my life savings on green. I'm such a fool. I should have right. done it. <laughs> You had a perfect system. You just double every time you lose, and then you always win your money. I, I could have just kept doubling. Yeah. Also, it's way worse than that because it's so much no, worse than is. that. Yeah, and he yeah. one or two out of thirty six. He delivers it so half heartedly. Like I, I think Kevin Sorbo was probably going for like exhausted by the world, but it just seems like Kevin Sorbo's like I can't believe I'm in another one of these movies. <laughs> I just I don't know how to make think it fucking God's Not Dead would be my Groundhog Day. Yeah, right. <laughs> I really thought Meet the Spartans was the floor, but fuck, I just <laughs> opened up a trap door and jumped in and I've been falling ever since. Don't cut the camera. I want this to be on the movie. <laughs> so, so then we, we cut to the GWN studios. That's the, the global world news. I guess, I'm guessing that's actually what the... It's global world news. Yeah, that's probably it. We, we, we cut to fucking Bucker Carlson. He is still expositing, right? He's still explaining to his listeners who presumably lived through the previous six months what happened during them. In case anybody missed living for the last six months, <laughs> let me read a quick summary <laughs> once again for you. People are upset that everyone disappeared. Still whining about that. And then he brings on Ruby Kincaid, who is the lead investigator into the rapture, or as they're calling it, the pandemic of evil. <laughs> pandemic. Why would they call it that? Right. Like, like, obviously, I know why the script writers wanted to work the word pandemic in there. But why would the people call it a pandemic if everybody just disappeared? <laughs> the, uh, we're calling it, you know, none of those people are on video anymore. So we're calling it Novid 19. Yeah, right. Because right. there was at least 19 of them. <laughs> so yeah, but she's the lead investigator. Who's lead investigator? Go fuck yourself. She's the lead investigator, and she's there to explain that the only way to battle the rapture is by making everyone stay at home. Yeah, the real rapture is the lockdowns. Am I right? That's huh? like two ham-fisted, it's like the pandemic references in the same minute. I was impressed. They're trying so hard to work COVID into this, but the script oh. was already written, so they just had to smash it in there however well, they right. could. It's so dumb. Because this doesn't make any fucking sense. Right. There's ne they never explain why they would want people to stay home. They never attach that to the vanishings because people was presumably like got raptured when they were in their homes, too. Right. So they like they worked the words in, but they never bothered to make any sense of them through the store. Right. Like show us a guy diving into his door, just barely not getting raptured or getting <laughs> raptured or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, OK, there's the thing. We're staying home. Angel flying away. Gosh, almost got him. Damn it. <laughs> I'm a wheel in a wheel covered in eyes. <laughs> There's also this great moment where where Ruby Kincaid, the lead investigator, is like, you know, uh, uh, to the television audience, she's like, there's just too much misinformation out there. And Bucker Carlson's like, wait, 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 hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. Let's yes. not get crazy. Tell me <laughs> this. Should Joe Biden explain the rapture and stop lying right now? Yes, he should, is your answer. <laughs> and she's like, what? <laughs> no, I'm saying we just need to stop stupid conspiracy theories. That's yeah. all I'm saying. I literally wrote in my notes, this movie is like boo. Don't silence the conspiracy theorists. I'm so sad I didn't get to see this with my church group in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, of course, she is there to warn everybody that they've used some computer models to predict what was going to happen. And it looks like there was going to be a second wave of rapture. That's right. right. We ran the rapture, the first one, into chat GPT, and it was like, <laughs> left behind two, there's a sequel to this <laughs> movie. Yeah. There's going to be another one. And to be clear, 
The reason they do that is so that the audience, which again, I should have been in the theater with, could go, Psh, computers. I don't even know how to find the Google at my house. Right, we yes. use the computers. And then as a complete throwaway line that will never return in any way, he's like, oh, well, we're entering, ending the interview right there. And then he turns to the camera. He says, I think, I, you know, I don't believe what the so-called experts tell me. And I wouldn't be too quick to sign up for a vanishing vaccine either. Oh, God. Yes. A vanishing vaccine? I rose to my feet. <laughs> I rose to my. <laughs> Look, hey, if you're new, you might have missed it. In the middle of last year, Noah got to watch his favorite football team come from behind in a really important game live. That's how I felt when he said, don't sign for a vanishing vaccine. <laughs> I was like, they're going to do it. They're going to take it all the way. <laughs> but and, and we have to point out here that we will never hear another word about vanishing vaccines at any point in the movie. Right. They just had to throw in a, and vaccines are bad line in there somewhere. Just to be mm -hmm. clear, that's like the greatest vaccine ever. It prevents vanishing. You can <laughs> sure maybe get vanished. And this is like, nope, magical vanishing blocked yeah. with RNA or something. What? Take that. So we cut back to Kevin Sorbo's house. He's put on his pilot uniform because he was a pilot in the first movie. He was also <laughs> Nicolas Cage in the first movie. It's so good. He puts it on. He looks so sad. And he walks downstairs and the daughter is like, hey, hey, dad, you, you going to wear that to watch TV in the middle of the workday like you've been doing <laughs> for the last six months? Is today a, yeah. what day is it? It looks like, you ever see a Halloween in an old folks home where they just put costumes <laughs> on these corpses? <laughs> and you're like, hey, he fought in World War II. Don't dress him like a bumblebee. <laughs> That's, that's how this pilot's jacket looks on Kevin Sorbo. So, all right, so we go, we go back to GWN Studios. Buck is furious because they cut his interview short just as he was explaining how you shouldn't trust experts about medical you shit. Canceled my amazing segment. That is how white people fight. It is. Why would you do that? <laughs> so, and his producer's like, no, it wasn't me. And she explains her name is. I believe Ivy Gold, because they can only name things after metals and gems. We have ruby, <laughs> <Yep>. steel, <laughs> gold. Yep. And she's like, no, it wasn't me. It was Rupert Murdoch. He cut the atheist shill, Rupert Murdoch. Yes, right. Cut yeah. Your <laughs> yeah. So, and the narrator, of course, is cutting in to go now. He's like, you remember him from the other movies, different actor, but he was the guy who was the investigative reporter, and now he's Bucker Carlson. So, anyway, so now you're in on that. And they realized that that the person who must have cut in and fucked with his like B-roll footage or whatever must have been Connor. So they go to see Connor. The instant that you see this person on screen, you're like, why the fuck is that human being in a movie? Well, <laughs> his name is Braden Sorbo, if that's any indication. Yeah. <laughs> oh, b Sorbo. Yep. Will he work his way into the finale for absolutely no fucking reason? <laughs> sure will. <laughs> I follow him on TikTok. Nice. So Bucker Carlson goes in to see the boss. This is Corbin Burnson. <laughs> it's very sad. And he goes to give his yelly, like, I don't believe in what the experts tell me. You shouldn't have had her on my show speech. Yeah. Corbin Burnson is just very reasonably explaining, like, you should interview people that you don't agree with. And <laughs> Tucker Carlson's like, she was a fear mongering liar. Computers experts fucking data this is a news <laughs> channel we're doing are you serious right now i want to talk to the heart of a nation so <laughs> seriously this is you are the movie at every single it really fucking is. moment yeah mm -hmm. and this is what it would the, uh, the fantasy that this movie is based on is if we were right yeah and then in the middle of this conversation, the secretary just pops in for no fucking reason. She's like, oh, hey, guys, um, the U.N. is pushing for the Romanian president to be the new secretary general. And I'm like, that seems like an odd choice. I feel like he'd be busy being the Romanian president. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like also, Stephanie, let me just say this. I feel like you don't need to pop in with U.N. inner politics related news. <laughs> I feel like that's something I can get in a memo sort of towards the beginning or end of the day. <laughs> and 
and he's like, hey, look, man, if you're going to pursue this kind of shit, then we're going to cancel your show. And Bucker Carlson says, you would never <laughs> cancel a show as popular as Bucker Carlson tonight, I am confident of. I think we both know that's never going to happen. <laughs> look at camera, look at second camera, look at third camera. So good. I was, I was up out of my seat clapping for the movie by myself in my apartment yep. at this moment. No, you weren't. Not, no, you weren't, Eve, because I was wherever I was up out of my seat clapping for the movie <laughs> in perfect unison. Butterfly effect. So, okay. So then we cut over to, to K-Sorb's daughter. She's going to miss her brother. She's going to stare flash back at Lee at his baseball mitt. Don't worry. If that's too mysterious, the narrator will explain to you why. Chloe feels bad because yeah. her brother vanished. Got it. He's- Thank you. <laughs> it's like, have you ever watched one of the, like, you watch a movie with somebody who's seen the movie a million times and loves it. They keep telling you what's happening, even though you already know. This movie's narrator <laughs> yeah. is doing that. Yeah. It's the worst. He says, by the way, that her brother got zooped at the rapture whilst they were hugging. Yes. Like, mid-hug. <laughs> which is... A, insane and also hilarious. I don't know how you don't show us that. Super funny, yeah. But how does the narrator know that? Good question. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) He he switches, I mean, spoiler alert, he switches from omniscient narrator to character halfway through the movie, but then will occasionally pop in to be like, wait, no, I know everything again. Yeah, it's (laughs) not God or Jesus, the narrator. (laughs) It's just the guy. We're going to meet him. That's going to join the party later. Just, Just a guy from the movie. All right, so so then we cut to Barker Carlson watching the news on his phone. He's like, I, I guess, doing research about the Romanian president now. Mm-hmm. And the Romanian president is talking about peace and unity and, and how we should all get along and, and strengthen our cooperative forces. And we as viewers are supposed to go, oh, that's how you know he's evil right there. Boo! Boo, unity! Boo! <laughs> yeah. And then he Bucker gets a call from Dirk, the hacker, crazy professor guy. Yeah. Right. This is who your crazy Uncle Frank imagines is QAnon and not a racist chicken farmer. Yeah, right. But it's not. It's a, it's a racist chicken farmer. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's a racist chicken farmer at Princeton University. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nope. No. No, man. <laughs> So he's like, hey, man, that guy, that assistant to Nicola Carpathia that you were just watching on your phone, that guy runs an evil company. And they're like, what's the name of the evil company? Just random, any name. You could use any name in the whole world. It's Dominator Analytics. (laughs) Yeah! Yeah. (laughs) It was like halfway into Dominion and one of their lawyers goes, "Ah, ah, ah." In nature, <laughs> Hugo Chavre. <laughs> Even if you set aside the Dominion connection, it's such a stupid name for their fucking company. So stupid. It's I I, fa- I like I can't describe what a what a world of delights. It, the Christian heaven is really the only thing close to how I felt watching this movie. <laughs> Dominator analytics. Oh, don't stop behind <laughs> too. It's a lot closer to Cyber Ninja than it is to Dominion fucking voting yeah, systems, right. which is they're trying to like. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Lampoon somehow. And then we cut to, I shit you fucking not. You thought it couldn't get better than Dominator Analytics. We cut to Jesus Christ in heaven, (laughs) introducing newly dead people to their lost loved ones. And the way he handles it is the fucking best. (laughs) And they're, they're like accidentally honest about what would be happening right now. Jesus is there in heaven. And somebody comes up to him and he's like, oh, shit. This is awkward. Uh, is that a picture of your, your brother or something? Yeah, I'm damning this child to hell. At the he moment. was gay, uh, so, so. <laughs> he's not here. Also, look, I know we never make fun of physical appearances on this show, <laughs> except for all the times we do. But Jesus is a little chunky. Okay, <laughs> just I feel I feel like this guy got cast as Jesus, and they were like, "Oh, we delayed shooting six months," and he's, he's a little more like melted Jesus Christ, if you know what I'm saying. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so, but Chloe shows up and she's like, oh, I, I want to be reunited with my little brother. And then Jesus just like shakes his head no at her, right? Like, no, nope, sorry, you're going to burn for eternity, I guess. 
Well, luckily for her, though, that was just a dream. K-Sorbs wakes this actress up by fucking caressing her leg. It, yeah. <clears throat> it's kind of gross. Very upsetting. And she's like, no, nah, sorry. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm awake. I'm awake. I was just, I'm awake. I was just having a, a nightmare about a, a very accurate portrayal of Christian theology. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> she's like, yeah, no, it's fine. My dream sequence was stupid anyway. Sorry. Sorry, Dad. I was dreaming a heavy-handed metaphor within our heavy-handed metaphor, <laughs> the movie. So, she goes, ah, oh, you know, it's just my dream was was really real. And I was like, no, it wasn't. It was very, it looked like something from like one of those Mormon plays that we do. Yeah. Right. It's, <laughs> it's like, it's like the movie just stopped and said, Hey, that dream sequence wasn't stupid looking at all. Yeah. <laughs> you put a long wig on John Goodman and pretended he was Jesus. What are you talking about? <laughs> and this is when Kevin Sorbo like comforts her and he says, no, it's cool. Mom and your brother are in heaven rooting for us right now. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear, part of eternal bliss in heaven is watching <laughs> your family go to hell sometimes. Yes. But like with Molly or whatever. I so guess, you're giggling yeah. Through it. Yeah. Right. Okay, now to be fair, Keith, put yourself in their shoes. If you could go to heaven right now and watch me spend seven years trying to escape horse locusts, you're telling me that's not a good time? <laughs> That's what I thought. But yeah, I know. I know what's going to happen at the end. Yeah, well, that's true. Yes, yeah, <laughs> you're spoiler. Jewish. It's like rewatching Friends. It still feels good. It still feels good. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> so, but but she's like, but Dad, the rapture theory has already been debunked on the news, and he says, "Okay, so do you think your mom was stupid or gullible?" And I'm like, that's not an or yes. thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess would be the best way to say yeah, it. Yeah, and both, both of those things are true. But one or more is true. Sure. <laughs> so, okay. So then we cut to Princeton. The hacker's hacking away. You can tell because his font is green. It's the hacking <laughs> font. Yeah, he's running his computer in DOS. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes, that's how you hack. So, but Buck is here to see him about not Dominion because that would have got us sued. Right. Dominator. Yeah. And we learn here that Dominator provides, this is the movie's quote, all the UN's data. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. All huh. information ever, ever, ever considered by the United Nations. UN, United Nations. Yes. Yeah. Am I here right now? Well, I better check with Dominator. <laughs> the UN looks at a calendar. Dominator runs in and tackles them. And like, well, here's our Dominator calendar. <laughs> I'll tell you what fucking day it is. <laughs> <laughs> the nation of France would once again like Dominator Analytics, the social media app to tell us our census this year. We are waiting for that data. What the fuck would that mean? Huh. Yeah. And, and he's like, so wait, you're saying that they can say anything they want and come up with fake data to back that up? And I'm like, dude, we can all do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. And he's like, well, the point is, Dominator is super bad. So just make sure you, Bucker Carlson, don't do anything to give him like, I don't know, like three quarters of a billion dollars. Like, just <laughs> go out of your way <laughs> to avoid that. Yeah, whatever you do. I love to because, of course, he has to keep showing him stuff on his computer. And he's like, and look at this. Here's some more information. I'm like, yeah, that's what computer screens look like, man. You're nailing it. You're nailing it. <laughs> right. He's he's supposed to have, like, used his Princeton hacking skills to check out Dominator Analytics. And he found, like, their evilness. Yes. And he's like, all right, yeah, so check this out. Dominator. And you know what? I'm, I'm turning off auto-suggest because I wrote Dominator Anal that time. <laughs> and that was bad. <laughs> But the movie is saying that he went to Dominator Analytics, their like FAQ page, and it was mm -hmm. it just said, yeah, we we make make up whatever you want us to it's make up, and we tell mother. the UN, and we control the world. Yeah, and then he's like, well, it, uh, Bucker Carlson is like, well, why would they do this? And Dirk, no shit, flips over his literal yarn and push pins <laughs> cork board. Yep, you know how that's a metaphor for people who have reasonable <laughs> opinions about the world. <laughs> Yep. Will that turn out to be correct? Yes. <laughs> Did some of my own research. Flap. And he's got it ready to go. <laughs> Literal yarn and push. And it's so silly. He cut out 
the title from the front page of like actual newspapers and like pasted them into his little board there. <laughs> you could just write that down. But right. he like no, cut him out like he was a kidnapper <laughs> doing a ransom note. <laughs> He had business cards from some of the globalists. He's got stickers, yep. like little sticker, like bumper stickers and coffee mugs. It's stickers. Just, it's so <laughs> dumb. And then, okay, so it, so then they, they have to walk away. He hides his laptop at night in a vent because he's sure that the evil government is going to come and steal it and in his sleep, which which they are because it's this movie. But again, like that, that is another, you know, that's another way that we can signal a completely sane character who's correct about his assumptions. Right. He tells us that his <laughs> computer is lead lined. Yes. Which, first of all, I want him to be like, let me just get it up into this bed. Hey, oh, <laughs> God damn it. Can you help Fuck. me? This is yes. really hard because oh, my you- arms have cancer. <laughs> this- <laughs> There's a lot of cancer in my arms. It's like the sixth heaviest metal. I don't know why. There's so many. And then he says, the feds have a thing that can read your computer from 10 yards away. Right. Unless it's, of course, covered with Unless it has lead. lead. Unless it has <laughs> lead. Because they use Superman technology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they can also download your hard drive from fucking anywhere if you're online. But yeah, the lead right. blocks no, that, but he too. Has, he has lead in his internet, too, man. It's, yeah. Right. No, <laughs> lead the Ethernet router. port. He, like, he dabbed a little bit of liquid lead with a Q-tip inside the Ethernet port. Yeah. <laughs> And then we we cut to her and Buck. Apparently, they're an item. Buck and Chloe, they met in the first movie, except they didn't. They actually never did meet in the first movie, but they're going out. They're dating. He's like 80 years older than her. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, no, it'll be fine. It, it, it's nothing compared to the uh, woman that they try to hook uh, Kevin Sorbo up with later in the movie. But yeah, <laughs> it's absurd. So yeah, but so they go on a lunch date together. Yeah, and like cold open to the lunch date is her being like, You're the biggest cable news anchor in the country that will never change. I just wanted to say that in the beginning. (laughs) I was so happy. But he was he but he's sick and tired of all the lies he has to tell on the so-called news. He -hmm. liked it better when he was an investigative journalist. Here's what he said. Here's what he says. He says, when I was an investigative journalist, I investigated things that Mm -hmm. needed to be investigated. As a journalist, got it. Yeah. I wrote in my notes, oh my God, that's what they came up with when they had to kind of sort of talk about what an investigative journalist does. Yeah. This is why the writer's strike matters, people. This, because this yeah. is what would otherwise happen. And and right after that, he's like, ah, uh, now I'm just an actor with lines on fucking Schmock's news. And like, again, it's you are the movie. I thought the movie was about to start crying in self-realization at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, they never hear it. Uh, they do this whole dialogue. I'm like, can you bring back Yarns and Pushman guy? I have no idea what the <laughs> fuck these people are talking yeah. about. <laughs> but luckily, it doesn't matter, right? The writers were very clearly yada, yada, yada their way to the worldwide cell phone alert that everybody suddenly gets that there's been a second series of vanishings, a second wave, if you will. And it's an amber alert. Yes. Uh-huh. Like they use the amber alert like, to, to list like, Two billion people. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so, okay. So then we, we cut to Bucker Carlson on the news. He's leading a panel about this so-called second wave. And we have this just, it's just nonsense, but it's such good nonsense as he goes from panelist to panelist with this movie, <laughs> wondering how us atheists would respond to the rapture. Yeah. One of the big theories was aliens yes, from the atheists. Uh-huh. Yeah. That that aliens disappeared all those people. And at, right after that, they introduced that. And then they introduced the idea that evolution is fake for like half a second just because they figured out a way to put it in. Yes. There. Oh. Like also evolution's fake. The, all you know, all those missing links. That's when when aliens did a mass kidnapping, so those make sense. Yeah, Dr. Science says, well, you know, we think people must have vanished millions of years ago. That's why there are so many gaps in the (laughs) fossil record. I wrote in my notes, fuck yes, movie. I love you like it's the first day we met. This That might have been. I wrote wrote it down verbatim in my notes and I said, this might be the most amazing line in the history of bullshit right here. Yes, that's why there are so many (laughs) gaps in the human evolutionary record is because the aliens were periodically... Coming and kidnapping us with raptures. What 
What would that mean? And then bringing us back when we were more evolved? Yeah, perfect what crime. Would that... <laughs> Because, you know, now us dumb atheists like Darwin write books about it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, Bucker Carlson, they're like, well, what do you think it was? And he's like, uh, teleporter ray of some sort. <laughs> the voice of reason, according yes. to the movie. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> Probably a disintegration ray. It's probably what it was. Have you seen Star Trek where they just uh, do the teleporter? It's probably that. Or it could be the Mandela effect. You know, all those people already died and we forgot because of that. Right? That's the thing. <laughs> I went to this conference. So, and then uh, at that point, they're like, oh, hey, we've got to like take a break from our panel discussion about the second vanishings for a UN press conference from Mr. Stonegal, the guy who runs Dominator Analytics. Do, do we let Mark Zuckerberg just call together the UN when he feels like it? They don't tell us about it. I feel like we should stop if we're doing that. Yeah. But yeah, they do, I'm sure. Yeah, and so he's there to tell everybody that there's going to be a one-world government. This Mark Zuckerberg character, right? This character that, as near as we can tell, has no government function whatsoever in his job title. He's just like, yeah, you know, given this uh, second wave of pandemic of evil stuff, we're going to have to create a one world government with a single currency that is digital. <laughs> and and I am willing to run it in case anyone wants to know. I fucking Belon Fusk or whatever I'm supposed to be. am <laughs> willing to stand. It's just like the head of Arby's being like, in case anyone's wondering, I'm now the head of all the navies. <laughs> also, all money is beef and cheddar. That's the unit right, of currency yes, is right. beef and cheddar. And everybody's like, oh, beef and cheddar. He goes, he goes, the UN has mandated the o everybody adopt the OTM payment system. OTM, by the way, stands for on the mark. Huh? <laughs> Seriously? Huh? That was developed by Israeli scientist Jewy McJew name. Holy <laughs> shit. Yikes. <laughs> On behalf of the black. What was his actual name? Chaim Rosen Swaik. God. <laughs> Rosen On behalf of the black dragon from D&D Minus. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Clearly just Kevin Sorbo. Hey, Kevin, uh, you want to improvise a Jewish person's name? Moishi. Hanukkah bagel. Yes. More than Hanukkah bagel. <laughs> I, I will tell you, Heath, I want to congratulate you for coming up with something more stereotypical than the name. Because as I was watching the movie, I tried to write the joke you just delivered so expertly. And I was like, nope, Chaim Rose and Swipe is funnier than anything <laughs> I'm going to come up with. All of the when. other ones, yes. No. <laughs> Lots of my friends are. That's his last name. Lots of my yeah. friends are. Funny. <laughs> Some of my best friends are. Minister Funny New York, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then that press conference, that UN press conference is suddenly an interview with Bucker Carlson between him, Mr. Stonegal, and Moishi Hanukkah Bagel. The United Nations gave Tucker Carlson like a live smash cut interview in the middle of their thing. Yeah. That's what they're saying? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and he goes, his opening line is, well, you know, you guys have uh, just dissolved all world governments and, and you know, changed all of our, our banking to this single system. I <laughs> quote, I think this is bigger news than most people realize. <laughs> hey, quick idea in case there's an apocalypse like this with a rapture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What if we just keep using the banks we already have? <laughs> I don't know. They're That's there. We have them. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. This is the last time a person could be forgiven for thinking that anything at all is going to happen in this movie. So we're going to pause on an upbeat. But we'll be back in a flash with even more of Left Behind, Rise of the Antichrist. Mint's got to go. Mint's got to go. Hey, guys, guys, what's, what's with the protest signs? Noah, did you know that our sponsor, Mint Mobile, was once owned by Ryan Reynolds? Uh, yeah. So? Well, obviously, we cannot support them anymore. Why? What's wrong with Ryan Reynolds? Um, he's hot and funny, Noah. You have to choose. Exactly. It's selfish is what it is. Look, g guys, I don't care who owned it. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month, and they make a great product. $15 a month? You are yanking my chain. 
I'm not. It is unyanked. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. It's true. I switched my whole family to Mint Mobile when they became a sponsor, and now I have the exact same coverage for a fraction of the price. All right. You know what? I'm sold. Where do I sign up? To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped directly to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Fine. But if Ryan Reynolds ends up doing a really good performance and winning an Oscar, he is going down. Exactly. Down. All right. Noted. Noted. Minions, come before me. Yes, master. Yes, master. I want to introduce you to Nikolai Carpathia, my Antichrist. Excellent. When the time is right, he shall rise to global power and damn the hearts of men, just like opposite Jesus. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep, we get it. Like uh, an opposite day thing. Uh, question, though. Yes, shoot. Yeah, so what's he going to, like, do before he's the Antichrist. Oh, yes. Well, he'll be the prime minister of a country who will then rise to power. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, I mean, like, it's going to be 2,000 years until then. What's he going to do before he's, like, on Earth doing all that? Oh. Well, shit, I don't know. I guess, um, well, he'll have to hang out here uh, in in hell. Oh, so... So he's a demon? No, no, he's a, he's a dude. He's like filled with demons or something. Right. Uh, does he have a soul? Not at all clear. Hmm. Excuse me, Satan. Uh, here he is. Nikki, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I, I am wondering, is it possible to turn down the heat in here? I am very, very hot. Uh, no. Um, so I'm going to have to keep it like... Hell temperature. Sorry. No, 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 no worries. No worries. It's okay. Okay, so that guy's just going to be, like, hanging out? Hanging out. This whole time? Yeah. I think I found a cool spot. No, you didn't, Nikki. You're in hell, bud. Oh, yeah. Nope. I feel it now. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Bucker at Corbin's office. Fucking making more COVID metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> so we said something on the news and then it happened. Interesting. <laughs> it's so stu- Yeah, that's the big point that he's making. He's like, what are the odds this scientist, so-called scientist comes in and says the models predicted something and then right away it ended up happening. Suspicious. <laughs> Very suspicious. Look, I'm an investigative reporter. What's more likely? A scientist predicted something and it came true? Or the social media app slash uniting currency slash world government faked it with all the data they provide to everybody all the time ever. Well, so this was the first time I realized that the movie's position was that the second wave of COVID was fake. Yeah. Right? Like, that's what the movie was trying to say. Mm -hmm. Because people keep going like, like, but did you actually meet anybody who vanished in the second wave of raptures? So, so I was curious about this to see if this was like an actual conspiracy theory. And I highly, highly recommend going (laughs) on 4chan or Reddit or any of those places and typing in the phrase, do you know anybody who died in the second wave? Because it is hilarious. Because here's what happens in every one of those threads. Nope, sure didn't. Seems like we've been tricked by the Jew media. Tell me about it, brother. He, uh, actually, my grandma died. Fuck you, you hit her <laughs> yes, secret. Yeah, you're ruining everything. <laughs> In on it. <laughs> All right. So, but Corbin Bernson makes it very clear that he's not allowed to know more about this shit, right? Yeah. Because Bucker Carlson's like, I'm looking into Dominator analytics. Because they're behind all of this. And and that's when Corbin Bernstein's like, no, you're not. I forbid it. Go to your room. So meanwhile, Case Orbs is now reading mom's heavily annotated Bible. (laughs) 
He's just flipping through being like, okay, this is now Jewish, Jewish, Jewish. Skip, skip. <laughs> yeah, here we go, revelation. Here's the yeah. good stuff. So then we cut to this disused church, right? He's going to the church to find the real answers. I must admit the all souls matter painted across the sign kind of made me laugh. Fuck yes, right? And the, the narrator comes in and he's like, they hated Christians after the rapture more than ever. And I wrote in my notes, okay, that's a lucky guess. We hated Christians before the rapture too. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> like that's not a real prediction. You guys are just really hateable. So he checks the door, door's locked. He goes around to the side and he sees a bloody footprint leading into the back door, right? So he grabs himself a, a golf club. The, the a white golf club, men. That's course. how white people fight, white men fight. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes to check in on the church. And the church has been like decimated, of course. Okay, the church hasn't been just decimated. Someone has cut the head off a pig. <laughs> yes. And nailed it to the cross. That Lord of the Flies is style. is very specific. Yes. <laughs> so a bunch of atheist vandals got together and one of them was like, guys, guys, <laughs> I have the best idea. Do you want to do a quick allusion to a British novelist? <laughs> <laughs> William Golding? Because he's pretty sweet. I mean, I have this pig's head on. I'm, I've got to do some fucking thing with it. You know, you guys were like, there's no way to incorporate your butcher shop into our post-rapture atheist shenanigans. Well, yes. <laughs> get ready to eat your words, Coco Melon. So, yeah, but this is where K. Sorbs finds Pastor Barnes, who is the narrator that's been explaining the movie to us scene by scene ever since, right? Okay, be honest, guys. Did you guys think that the narrator was going to be like, that's me, I'm in the movie now. Hello. <laughs> right. Stop talking, I'm here. It would have been great if he had been like in the middle of narrating and then he had to be like, and we've now together, it's two voices. We're nope, left. cut Ooh, one of them. It's their me, voices I'm talking. Mel I'm yes. talking. I <laughs> am me. Me now. I'm in the now. Every time he starts narrating, you get that like feedback squeal, like yeah. when the guy doesn't turn his radio <laughs> to the collar. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Mirror battle. Reset your browser. We have to sword fight. So meanwhile, <laughs> Chloe is walking along, being followed by a very creepy dude. This, <laughs> so okay. Stupid. This is the best because... I'm so sorry. She looks around. She's like, oh, that guy's creepy. And then he's gone. And she's like, well, I guess he's not anywhere. And tackled him. Yes. <laughs> which means, again, you have to look at this from any angle except the stupid angle this movie is trying, which is someone in the middle of an open sidewalk sees a creepy guy. Then he's like, whoop. Hides behind a truck for a second. He's like, she's probably unaware. <laughs> and it worked. It worked because she looked in all directions except the one he was running at her from, apparently. Right. He was using that futuristic teleporter that Tucker was talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, but he knocks her down. He tries to take her back. He fails. She, she pepper sprays him and he runs off. But in the melee, her arm is cut really bad. So now Chloe goes to see Dr. Sam Sorbo about her knife wound. And this is the first time where it really struck me the absolutely bananas assumption this movie keeps making. Like, this character is, of course, this character from the first movie, reminding them again that none of the people from the first movie are in this movie. Right. So every time you see a character be like, hey, Dr. H., do you mind if I come in <laughs> after what we've been through? No, no, but there is no movie with these people in it from before. No, you look a lot like Nicolas Cage, Kevin Sorb. <laughs> what? And also, I, I want to be clear about this. I know this is just the background, but we have to talk about this shit. Why is it that Christian rapture movies always think that we would be unable to like maintain municipal garbage pickup <laughs> after the rapture. I don't first understand. Day, first day of the rapture. <laughs> first thing we do, we light everything on fire. Everything. Obviously. Oh, right. yeah, Number obviously, one. Obviously, a lot, of, a lot of shit. And uh, we crumple up metal garbage cans from the past because those don't exist anymore. <laughs> yes. And we put those <laughs> everywhere. The 80s. <laughs> and then and we're probably going to throw around a bunch of wood pallets all over the place yep. for no reason. <laughs> Heath, Heath, sorry. Quick question. Quick question. If I need to warm myself post the rapture, do you have garbage fire? Garbage fire. <laughs> garbage fire. Garbage fire. Garbage fire. What is, what's the first thing I just said? Duh. You light everything garbage on fire. fire. Light everything on fire. Oh, no, that's on me. That's on me. Yep. Yep. Try to keep up. So, yeah, but so she knocks on the door. Sam Sorbo comes to the door. They're looking spectacular, by the way, Sam. Yeah, fantastic. You're ready to leave him, Sam. You don't need him anymore. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just so you know, Sam. 
<laughs> we know you're listening because your son's listening because he's on TikTok and we're a podcast, which means you're listening. You're ready. Yeah, no, we, we're all ready for you. <laughs> So yeah, but she so she takes a look at uh <laughs> Chloe's cut and she's like, yeah, no, it looks like this one won't need stitches. That obviously needs stitches, you lazy motherfucker. That's so goddamn deep and awful. It's like she tried to jump onto a stage with her arm. <laughs> oh, it's not you looking good. <laughs> I was gonna say Noah's next in line. Yeah, no, mine's good too. <laughs> <laughs> I still that's still scabbing up. Yeah, and then and then this film's magical black lady shows up. Yeah, that's a bingo. Can I say all the way bingo? Magic Black Lady speed run. Okay, we've seen <laughs> magical black people. This woman charges in the room. She's like, mm -mm, "Child, I'll tell you what. You know the future. I know the past. Boo boo doo doo. The number thirty-seven. I'm, <laughs> I'm a magical black lady. Like Doppler yes. effect. Yeah. Right. All right, so then we, we cut to k -Serps. He's taking rapture notes. <laughs> so I paused on the notes for way too long. I just want to read one bit. At the top left-hand side of the page, it says, where did they go? And then right below that, it says, heaven in all caps, double underscored with two exclamation <laughs> points. So, so he wrote down heaven and he was like, I, I want to make sure my eyes pop right to that when, yes. I, when I refer back to this. Let me, hold on, can I italics it? No, I wrote it with my hands. Shit. Underline, underline. Yeah. Yeah. Also, he 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 takes out like a, a whiteboard. Yes. And he writes. <laughs> this is so stupid. Like they're trying to do the timeline of the rapture. He writes himself a visual aid for the concept of seven years, which, <laughs> yes. which to be clear is a line. A line. That's, that's what he <laughs> yes. writes. Right here on one side of the line is zero the beginning years. yeah got it just now and then here at the end i'm impressed you started at zero instead of one i gotta be honest <laughs> there's, there's, here at the end that's well he does get it wrong though right like we keep <laughs> saying it's gonna be seven years and he's like rapture will be six years so that pastor barnes can say no 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 you're getting it wrong it's gonna be seven years right no, yeah. did you start at zero or one? Oh, oh i'm wrong either way it's sorry no <laughs> never mind <laughs> I also love how they have to vague it up, right? Like it's yeah. your fantasy. And he's like, so it starts right away. And he's like, I wouldn't say that. I'm don't want to. <laughs> We've been so wrong about a lot of stuff. When a peace we just, agreement we like is didn't dealt have with by Israel or when the Dome of the Rock is uh, and engines. Is destroyed. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Can we just become Christian now and win? And like, <laughs> yes, that's yes. literally the answer. Anytime in the next seven years, you just do that. You say yep. it out loud or not, and you're good. And you go to heaven. That's it. That's it. Guys, side note question. When the rapture comes, are you guys going to wait six years and 364 days to become Christian just so you can get all your looting and raping and murdering in during the tribulation? Or you can do it right away? Oh, no, you wait. No, no, no. You do it right away because you could die at any point, but... But you just keep asking for forgiveness for the looting and the raping. It's, the, 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 it's not like it's not like there's not already a built in out. Yeah, right? I feel like you do like a, a, a like after a really good night of looting, you're like, oh, no, I'm a, I'm a Christian until next Friday, if you know what I mean. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Uh, right, right. Yeah. Lord, give me chastity, but not just yet. That's my strategy. I feel like <laughs> yeah. Aquinas said right, that, yeah. right? Uh, Augustine. Um. Then he turned fish into fish in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Some ex-Catholic listening to this right now is like, ah, good one, Mr. Bosnick. So, and then Pastor Barnes is like, hey, if you want to know a little bit more about this, I have a convenient DVD that was made by the pastor that did get raptured just in case, like a break glass if. Oh, shit. You have like the answer key to the movie. Let's definitely yes. watch that. Yeah. <laughs> It's a DVD, though. Do we have a DVD player? <laughs> so, is it the past? Uh, is it starring an actor who's way too excited to be in this movie? Yes, it is. <laughs> it sure is. I think this is like Kevin Sorbo's pastor or some shit. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm going to install power DVD. Oh, it's going to take a second. I don't <laughs> I just... So, here's another question that came up for me watching this scene. How many real-life preachers... Do you guys think I've recorded these stupid post-rapture videos? I bet it's like hundreds through history have been like, Han, set up the camcorder. I need to make something yes. for our whore daughter when we go. 
<laughs> I wrote down the same fucking thing in my notes. I want to see those so bad. I'm sure oh it's my God. tons of them. But hey, guys, get together and put one fucking answer key on YouTube <laughs> so we have it for the there rapture you that you believe is well, going to happen. We, we keep censoring them, Keith. Pay attention to the Right, movie. yeah, exactly. They can erase us off of YouTube. Put it on Rumble. Come on. <laughs> So, so Vern the pastor's telling him all about the tribulation, and I wrote in my notes, I bet he doesn't bring up the scorpion horse locusts. I kept writing that every time somebody's like, what's the tribulation going to be like? I'm like, come on, bring up those fucking scorpion horse locusts. I dare no, you. They never do I it. double dare you. He bitches out at one point. He's like, I don't want to get into the decals, and I'm like, is that because they're unimaginably stupid? And he's like, <laughs> shit. <"Shoo." laughs> yep. We've seen so many of these movies. I think one ever has even tried to do one scorpion horse locust. Yes, yeah, know, we yeah. had one horror movie that kind of half-assed them and one apocalypse movie that really went full horse locust. Yeah, no, it had the, the you could see the silhouette. Shadow of them, puppets yeah. and everything. Yeah, exactly. I would make a yeah, movie like great. from the perspective of the scorpion horse locust as like <gasps> the protagonist. <laughs> oh, Keith. Yes. Where's right? that yeah. GoFundMe? Yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> Forget Matreon. Matreon's canceled, everybody. We're doing a horse locust. <laughs> horse locust romantic comedy between Chaim Rosenkreutz and the scorpion, a scorpion and a horse locust. locust? With, the lady, yeah. Yeah. with the lady face, yeah. Um, and we play all the characters like Eddie Murphy. Blake Lively. Because you, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you, you're fucking up this very reverent scene here, by the way, because this yeah, is the moment, <laughs> right, where, where Kevin Sorbo gets down on his knees and becomes a Christian. He invites Jesus into his heart. Pastor Barnes comes so they can be buddy Christians, I guess. Mm -hmm. they, they stand back to back and, and do the Jesus thing or whatever. Here's yeah. what occurred to me during this scene, because we've watched a lot of come to Jesus moments. Does it count if you don't do all the flowery language? Like, if you're like, fine, Jesus, I'm saved. Does that count? No. Right. How sarcastic is your <laughs> is your phrasing allowed to be? Jesus is going to be like, like you mean it. <laughs> <laughs> this movie also has the most verbose magic Jesus words of any come to Jesus that we've ever heard, right? Yeah, it's like a penalty for like handing in an essay late. Like the magic spell, <laughs> it's the same as right. before the rapture, but now like, all right, now you have to write 2,500 words and you're just okay, like, yeah, oh, no, all right, yeah. like I mean it <laughs> longer. Can I change the margin? So now, okay. So now we cut back to Dirk, the Princeton hacker guy, right? And he's trying to hack into Eden, which is the one world OTM currency thing. Yeah, which is a little like saying you've broken into a building's main room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? Shut up. Hacking. I said hacking. We're not taking any questions. Are you inside the Empire State Building? Yes, I'm in it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So he can't, but he can't get it. He can't get it. And then he gets a mysterious message from Dan Seven. It just says hi, hello. Yes, yeah. hello. <laughs> Never respond to that. Are you? No. I could know the person very intimately and be like, really, hello? Absolutely not. You will need to add some information to that before I say anything. Yeah. Also, I did enjoy that, like Daniel Seven. That's about the four monsters that represent the four evil kingdoms, mm. the Israel's mm -hmm. been thing. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I wrote in my notes, oh, please let him be texting a fire-breathing Jew. Oh, please let yeah, him be texting right, a fire-breathing right. Jew. We don't know. We'll have to find out in the third one. But he's like, the Dan Seven is like, hey, you tried to hack into Eden today. And he texts back, nah, uh And then he like sets his phone down. He's like, yeah, I probably nailed it. Probably nailed it. <laughs> Who dis? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> New phone. But then Dan Seven sends him the password. And the password I checked, according to security.org, the password that gets you into the one world currency is literally 100 quadrillion times worse than the one that gets you into my Facebook profile. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay, <laughs> look, I don't I don't want to give tell too much out of turn, but one of the conflicts that we've had within our company is that my passwords are all basically password one, two, three, four, <laughs> and they're all stronger than this one. It is, and I'm not kidding, Eight characters long. Yes, it is. That's nine, but yeah. It's ten, yeah. <coughs> oh, no, you're right. It's ten. 
But yeah, and it's also it's a Bible reference. It's so fucking stupid. But but that gets him in. It's a bit. There's a clue to the world giant conspiracy yes. in the fucking in the password. password. Yeah. <laughs> Right. The password to the like money of the world money vault at moneyedenmoney.com. Right. And he just hacked into all of it with this password. Yeah. He can move all the money to anywhere he wants now that he's got the 10 fucking character passwords. Except Israel because they're holding out and they're really yeah. fucking up. Well, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Romania. Our password's also money. <laughs> <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then we cut to Hattie coming to see Kevin Sorbo. Who, Who the fuck is Hattie? Right. I do. She was in the first movie. In the first movie, Nick Cage's character was having an affair with a stewardess named Hattie. That's who this is. Okay. Yep. But the movie is just like, you remember the different actress that played this character last time? <laughs> I wrote in my notes. I'm like, did Kevin Sorbo just say, I feel like a beautiful woman would be trying to fuck me by this point, right? <laughs> he <laughs> sure did, baby. <laughs> oh, this poor actress. She's so lovely. And she has her hair done like the prom. <laughs> She's in her little sexy black dress. Shit. Yeah. And she is literally 32 years younger than Kevin Sorbo. Kevin wow. Sorbo is two to the fifth power younger. <laughs> yeah. He is almost certainly older than her dad. Yes. Her father. Almost certainly. Yes. <laughs> oh, she doesn't even know how to do it. She's like, oh man, I would love to lick your. <laughs> Double lumpy area. <laughs> Fuck. I love how that little white bubble of spit is just staying there at the corner of your mouth now forever. <laughs> so <laughs> yummers. <laughs> But she no longer works for the airline. She's now gotten a job working for the Antichrist for Nicola Carpathia. She's his personal assistant. Weird pipeline, can right. I say? It's a weird... <laughs> right? <laughs> I see you've been a, a flight attendant. You're hired to be yeah, the so aide to the new world president. <laughs> yes. Would you like chips or cookies or for me to be your secretary? <laughs> <laughs> So, but she's there to tell him that that Nicola Carpathia needs pilots for his, you know, one world government. Oh, it's so sad. She's like, so do you want a job again? Because you look like super duper unemployed. Like, really, I see you're wearing <laughs> the Sorbo, pilot the thing. Actor. <laughs> plus, you're wearing the pilot jacket and sweatpants now, man. Like, come on. I can get you a job. You have ointment on your face. And she's like, and you could you could have a job and, and we could have sex. And he's like, I can't fuck you now. I'm Christian. <laughs> and she's like, oh, darn. Oh, <laughs> I so shucks All the sex we would have. <laughs> we make a lot of fun of the actors in the movies we watch. But say what you will. These women do Oscar worthy performances being like, oh, I wanted Kevin Sorbo to touch me <laughs> yeah, and now he's right. not gonna <laughs> there's this great moment where she's like oh you know you took the coward's way out he goes no being a christian is the is that uh, makes me an anti-coward it's the bravest of all the things actually accepting christ is the bravest thing ever <laughs> <laughs> accepting christ is too big according to some women too big yeah, so. too girthy <laughs> won't even fit so she storms out and I wrote in my notes, now she wore a butt plug for nothing. You you never wore a butt plug for nothing. So <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't even make sense. Thank you. <laughs> and then, sorry, this this is such a throwaway scene that we probably shouldn't even mention it, but I absolutely have to. We see like this news reporter, there's a crowd gathering to cheer on the Antichrist when he arrives. And the news reporter, <laughs> she says, she's like, you know, we don't, we don't normally see reactions like this for a... a politicians i haven't seen a crowd like this since barack hussein obama's obama it would have been very reasonable for you to assume that he was the antichrist based on the crowds that he got this is a u.n diplomat who has like yes. rabid fans like Beatlemania, being like yeah, right. <laughs> <"Sign my tits, laughs> hussein Carpathia. Woo! Obama! swoon this also just in, Werther's are a delicious low calorie snack, yes. and grandchildren should be grateful when you offer them. So, 
So we just get that very quickly. We cut back to Dirk's office. Now Buck has arrived and, and he's going to fill him in on the big plot point. He says, hey, man, all the banking stuff and one world government stuff, that's only 10 percent of the program. And he's like, well, what's the other 90 percent? He goes, it's surveillance, tracking, biometric reporting. I'm like, so Fitbit. <laughs> right. Also, social credit. Social credit. Yes. That yes. List. So like street cred tracking. Yes. Uh -huh. By yeah. the world government, just like in China. Yeah. No, that's the thing. Yeah. I, like, honestly, I'm I'm all for that shit. But yeah, yes, that's what they're afraid of. Yeah. That, that, you know, you'll get social credit points for like letting an old person take your seat on the bus. Oh, like Grand <laughs> Theft Auto, like the meter goes up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like yeah that. Exactly. You know, but the opposite kind of. OK. Yeah. 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 So, OK. So and of course, this is where he explains that in order to buy things, you're going to need to get the mark on your on your hand or on your forehead. Yeah. He says, download the app or starve to death. And I wrote in my notes. I mean, that's already Grubhub's model. So I yes. get it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I feel like we've talked about this before, but are people taking the forehead in that scenario? I'm totally taking forehead. Imagine <laughs> being the one guy who takes forehead and just making every, it's like having a card. At the point of sale, you're going to headbutt the fucking thing to yeah, pay right, at yeah. the supermarket? I'm going to be the guy who's like, actually, I went with head and they're going to be like, fuck, okay, here, let me, I got to get the key <sighs> to take it off its little <laughs> chain. Gotta, we have to have the cord like a pig's tail so just for you, man. Everybody's Come on. different heights. Yeah, so he's like, they're going to make everyone conform. And I wrote in my notes, like, yeah, oh, if there's one thing that Christians hate, it's conformity. So, <laughs> and Dirk says, hey, I have a source and he's willing to talk to me on camera, but I should go alone in case it's a trap and you're the main character. <laughs> yeah, I've got all the information. All I need to go do is go to a place where there are people and things. Are you sure you don't want to tell me now? Yeah, right. I'm going to go now. I, right. I promise not to die. Yeah. So. Apropos of nothing, I promise not to die. <laughs> also, just to be clear, one other big piece of evidence is that when he hacked into all of the world Eden thing, they have a secret screen that shows a diagram of their evil plan. Yes. Like visually in a simple way, like an Ikea manual of the world takeover. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like PayPal. And then there's an area that just says stealth functions. And then there's stealth the functions. You literally stealth, stealth functions. functions. Stealth functions. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I really want to be on the all hands meeting, right? Where the CEO is trying to get everyone pumped for stealth functions. Huh? <laughs> huh? Am I right? <laughs> Okay, no, that's cool, but why are we putting it on our page? I don't understand <laughs> why we would have this in... Under oh, FAQ? You're going to put it's frequently asked? We're, we're not taking questions. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. This movie's desperate effort to create tension is just shy of threatening to spit on us, so we're going to take a quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will this movie end the same way every single Rapture movie ends? Is that because the very premise demands that the protagonists be incapable of affecting the outcome in any meaningful way? <laughs> <laughs> Will Christian movie makers ever fucking realize that? No. Find out the answers to these questions and more. We'll be we returned for the diminishing returns conclusion of Left Behind Rise of the Antichrist. Hey, podcast listener. As we mentioned at the start of the show, this month is Matreon. That's the time of the year when we ask you to consider tossing us a buck or two to help make our show happen. And we know not everyone tunes in for every single episode. Though, to be clear, if you do, we do love you the most. We do love you the most. Yes, we do. But we know a lot of you will be here for this one. And that's why, without irony, we just wanted to say thank you. Whether you give or not, we are incredibly grateful for your presence and support. You're who we do this show for, and we feel unbelievably lucky to get to do it. So, if you haven't donated yet, or you want to update your pledge, you can head over to Matreon.com and do that. But if not, we're still super glad you're here. Because we couldn't have made it without you. So, thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. 100%. Tim is blind. So close Dude. to being a really nice thing we had going. Really? I didn't know how to end it, and there was a pause. You just stopped talking. You just stopped talking. You. I'm telling you, he was just mowing his lawn, and then boom. Crazy. Yeah, mine was a checkout clerk. Like, poof, like right out of his clothes. Yeah. Guys, guys, did you see the news? Yeah, yeah, man, we saw. It. So, um, dude, what is that? What? Do, what do you oh, this is a it's a pig's head. Uh -huh. We gotta we gotta go to a local church and like nail it to the cross. Well, why? What? 
because it's the rapture. You guys have seen the movies. We're supposed to like do violent shenanigans to churches, right? Don't that is that what? We, okay, but just to to repeat, why? I don't know, Heath. We're mad. Rapture. Something pig's head. Come on, this wasn't easy to get. This was not easy to get. I mean, dude, if anything, wouldn't atheists be really humbled right now? Yeah, I actually feel really bad about the podcast now. Well, exactly. Yeah. Look, guys, I have a pig's head, and it's getting gross. So, can I please make one more argument that we go fuck up some church and nail this thing to their crucifix? Oh, okay, one more. It's getting gross. Everyone at the church. It's hot. Okay. Everyone at the church is a Christian who's just been proven right. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'll get a crowbar. I got it. Where'd you get a pig's head? I got a guy. Got a guy. Yeah, thought so. Stupid question. And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action at GWN Studios with Buck arriving for work. I'm fucking Braden Sorbo's just standing around with this big stupid, I'm still in the movie too, grin going on. My dad put me in the movie. Right, dad? Don't say dad. Don't say dad. <laughs> hey, have you have you talked to my dad lately? I mean, Buck Quenson. What's my dad's name? <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> Rayford, Rayford Steele. I work here. So, <laughs> in the movie. <laughs> it's so stupid. Too. So and, and so Bucker Carlson is talking to his assistant and then some lady walks by and says, I'm the next in line if you get f- fired or something and I want your job. Just thought yeah. I'd Hello. tell you my motivation. It's Maura Ingram right there. Yeah, she's going to take his job. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had her down as Rita Skeeta and I think that really shows the generational divide there. <laughs> Who? She's the nosy reporter from the Harry Potter books. <laughs> okay. Laura Your Laura Ingram's Ingram reference was probably Fox. better, all things considered. Yeah, no. okay. <laughs> so Buck, is, is, he says to his assistant, hey, like I've got this bombshell report right here in these files, which I'm going to set right here and then ignore for a little bit right after my work rival walked by. Hope that goes well <laughs> for me. Yeah, I'd say, why does he treat that paperwork so incautiously, except... I am now deeply aware of how incautious networks like Fox News and Infos Wars are with their incriminating no, data. So <laughs> it's true. I'm just gonna put this on top of a porn server full of porn that I'm gonna set no. <laughs> so and then we get so he sets down his thing, and then we see this video of Nicola Carpathia making this speech about how he's gonna be the one world president. And he's supposed to be the Romanian president. But he sounds like he's from fucking Iowa. He does have the transatlantic (laughs) accent. Yeah, I was wondering why no one brings that up. Why would he not have a communist accent? We've seen (laughs) enough of these movies to know. It's not like he needed to do well with that accent. No, no. you do like grandpa doing Borat right before the stroke hits. And they're like, no, I get it. He's the Antichrist. (laughs) Yeah, that'll also just quick note. If you're an evil person trying to take over the world, Mm -hmm. you're doing a press conference. Don't have a henchman with a giant leather duster right next to you during <laughs> such good right. advice. Press conference. Just have him out of frame. He can still be right there. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. What did we say about menacingly cracking your knuckles behind me, huh? Yes. Yeah, so what did we say? Do do quietly out of frame. That without the accent. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, while everybody's wrapped by this uh, speech that that Carpathia is giving. The evil anchor rival lady, Maura Ingram, finds the bombshell files that <laughs> Buck has left laying around. Which, yeah. Yeah. the top piece of paper, he <laughs> drew himself yeah. the evil flow chart on paper yes. to remind himself how the, 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 the evil goes from PayPal to then was the suspect evil part. And he, he yeah. drew the whole thing for her. The stealth mode. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, so then we cut to Corbin's office where Buck is presenting all this evidence to him. He's like, see, now I have evidence of the big conspiracy thing that I was talking about earlier. <laughs> and again, Corbin Burnson is like, that's not proof. You just, you know, drew a thing. It says PayPal and there's an arrow and it says stealth evil. That's nothing. What, <laughs> what am I looking at? 
He goes, who's your source on this? And he's like, I don't have to tell you that. He's like, is it that same guy who's a 9-11 truther? He's like, I'm not taking any more questions. <laughs> That's <this> not <laughs> something I have to have a comeback for. I'm doing the story whether you like it or not. I just wanted to clarify that the guy who we have believed to be right about everything and is a reasonable actor within this movie is a 9-11 truther. Yes. Cricket. You know, <laughs> Princeton yeah. Princeton professor, 9-11 truther. Yep. Yeah. One of those guys. Yeah. Who's friends with Tucker Carlson. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. And then he tells Corbin Burtson, I'm running this story no matter what. And I was like, I don't think you get to do that. No, man. it's not a thing. <laughs> That's just runs out, tries to turn the camera on himself, selfie mode. Hey, everybody, it's me, Bugger Girl. You know that's not plugged into anything, right? <laughs> we, we have to, and then we have to, like, we, we cut into that scene for just a second for, because I guess Kevin Sorbo felt like he hadn't been on camera recently enough, you know? So we cut in real quick to him calling Chloe. Chloe is at Dr. Sam Sorbo's place with Fern. I guess this is a hospice. And he's like, hey, could you want to come down to the church and get a goddamn plot underway? We're over an hour into this movie at this point. <laughs> you want to get Christian for the finale? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, and she actually says, no, I'm busy. You're jumping the gun, dad, actor. It's not the finale yet. <laughs> so they just delay on it. Yeah. It's the best. Sam Sorbo wanders into frame. Actually, he's my dad, though. He's, <laughs> my, he's not your dad. You call him dad? Yikes. <laughs> He's cool. He was Hercules. <laughs> he was famous. He used to be famous. Did you ever see him in Hercules? No. <laughs> and then, well, and then, of course, Fern, the magical black lady, is like, "Oh, I want to actually go to that church where your dad is to get baptized quick before I die of my dramatic cough." And she's like, "Oh, that's how we're gonna we're gonna bring all of that together, huh?" Okay, fine. <laughs> but first, we have to cut back to Corbin Burnson's office, where now he's. He's fucking firing Bucker Carlson. Oh, this is the greatest. He's like, hey, <laughs> a few minutes ago, I know we just stood here for three minutes in silence while something else happened. <laughs> a few minutes ago, you were like, I'm doing the story whether you like it or not. And then you tried to do like a selfie shot into a camera that wasn't plugged in. <laughs> it's crazy. I didn't fire you right away. You're fired. I don't know why I waited three minutes, but you're fired. And I was so fucking happy. <laughs> It's so stupid because when we cut back, Corbin Burnson is like practicing his with his putter. He's got his little putting green out and everything, which means that fucking Bucker Carlson was like, I'm running the story whether you like it or not. And he's like, OK, let me set out my little uh, putting green. I have a response. <laughs> I got to go find my putter, though. We'll talk in three minutes. I'm doing a putt thing. Yeah. Yeah. And Corbin Burnson roasts him for a second at the end right after he fires him. He's like, also, your show fucking sucks. Like nobody, like, the only ads we get are like a Christian pillow infomercial. We don't even make money on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you suck. More old people die in front of your show than young people watch it. I just want you to really, really focus in on that statistic. So, okay. So then we cut to Kevin Sorbo at the church. He's reading these Christian pamphlets. Pastor Barnes comes by and he's like, hey, man. These pamphlets are fucking great. <laughs> these are amazing. These are awesome. <laughs> Nobody would ever want to throw these in the trash and they'd probably regret it if they did. <laughs> oh, man. If only someone had handed me a pamphlet like this when I was an atheist before the rapture. Yeah. Oh, I would not have used it as rolling paper in front of that person. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Sorbo's pumped about the pamphlets. I love that the pastor is like, I'm a pastor and that's dumb. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> you, it's like 30 pamphlets. Yeah. So he's basically got these. So you're being raped up the butt by scorpion horse locust pamphlets. And he's like, we need to give these out because people are getting raped up the butt by scorpion horse <laughs> locusts. And the pastor's like, nah, I've done that, man. It's just it's thankless work. Oh, I don't what know. What to expect when you're expecting scorpion horse locusts. Horse locusts. <laughs> Sexual assaulting you. To be fair, if you don't meet me in the middle here, I might distribute these pamphlets in the dumbest possible way. <laughs> wait for it, listeners. Wait for it. So Dirk and Buck are going to go to meet the source together. But first they have to stop at GWN to pick up Kevin Sorbo's son and let him be in the movie some more. Hey, hey guys, I'm here. I'm here. Cool. Yeah. You're going to be running the cameras for it. Yep. Hi. Hi camera's like a movie. Uh huh. <laughs> that my dad said. Hey, yep. We're in a movie. <laughs> don't, right, don't, don't, just, yep. Just don't say it. Come here. Come here. Did you see this? The camera guy sold me some pot. <laughs> Look at this. The so, and there's this amazing bit where they get to the parking lot at GWN. <laughs> 
and there's two bad guys sitting in the most obvious bad guy truck holding the most obvious bad guy objects dressed in the most obvious bad guy way just looking straight at them. <laughs> just like selfie sticks going out the window with a big blinking red light on a camera looking at <laughs> waving it at these people I'm so dumb they literally, it literally would have been less suspicious if they'd been dressed as bushes, right? Because then you could have said, like, well, maybe that's an art project they're doing or something. But anyway, so they're like, they're in the evil bad guy truck and they're calling the boss and they're like, yeah, it looks like they're about to like blow everything wide open. Do you want us to do the thing? And they're like, all right, we'll do the thing. Wait, should we wait until they get inside the car to do no, the thing? No, just do it, whatever, no, right now. It doesn't matter. Right this moment. No, do it literally this second, right now. <laughs> I want them to have a me and Heath trying to do a countdown. Right? <laughs> he said to do it now. They're walking away from the car. Why would you do it? He said to do it now. He's going to yell. At the <laughs> I'm pushing the button. <laughs> All right. But so no, no, here's what happens, though. They're about to do the bomb thing. But then Dirk notices the bomb because it's covered in multicolored blinking LED lights. Yep. There's a disco ball <laughs> hovering above it somehow. It's like a video game. Object. I feel like bad guys put way too, and it's beeping. Just don't it plays add a little audio tune. components to your do, 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 do. <laughs> Boss, can we take that off? I don't know. Did you buy that? Was that so, extra radio show? Yeah, would have had to been extra. Yeah, but Dirk yells, "It's a bomb!" So Bucker and uh, and Connor, that's that's uh, Brayden. That's Kevin Sorbo's son, they get out of the way just in time, but Dirk explodes and and dies. Oh, We're done with should, it. Should, oh, no. Should have dipped that car in lead before you left. <laughs> yeah, no, then they would have never shot. gotten to him. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> They're driving the lead car. <laughs> so, so, okay. So we head back to the church where the pastor is trying to convince Chloe and Sam Sorbo that this is the rapture, despite the fact that the TV says that the rapture theory has been debunked. Right. Right. And Chloe is just like arguing back and it's the best. My favorite part of that is she's blocking Fern from getting baptized yes. and Fern's right. about to die of the coughing like any minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so good. She's like, hey, shut the fuck up. I'm dying. I you, you heard me in the Doppler effect earlier. Let's fucking go. <laughs> well, and, and Chloe, of course, is the stand in for the, your niece that always beats you at arguments and Thanksgiving and, and makes you feel really bad about yourself. Right. That like the whole movie is about like, but what if you turned out to be right and your niece sure would be sorry then. Right. Right. And she's like, well, so so tell us a little bit more about the details of what this tribulation will be like. And I wrote in my notes, I bet he doesn't mention the scorpion horse locusts mm -mm. again. It's so good. Hey, how many bowls of blood will God pour out? Do you, <laughs> is there a specific number of bowls of blood that God are going to pour out? So and, and then she says, and I love this so goddamn much. She says, what about all the people who claim that the rapture isn't in the Bible? And I wrote in my notes, claim? <laughs> so to be clear, she means Catholics. The fucking rapture is not in the Bible. The, the, the rapture is a thing that some dude came up with in the 18 fucking 50s or some shit. Right. There is no reference to it whatsoever in the historical record or in the Bible. You have to misinterpret. It's credible. Like, you know how Mormonism is credible? Yeah, right. It's credible like that. <laughs> exactly. The same long in the story tradition. So she's like, he's like, well, here is here's a reference to the rapture right here in the Bible. It's first Thessalonians chapter four, verse 17. And if you read this first, what it's very clearly saying is that the people who've already died will get to go meet Jesus a little bit before the people who are still alive. Because, of course, in the original conception of heaven, you were just dead when you died and then you got resurrected mm -hmm. to go to heaven once Jesus comes back. That The idea that like people are in heaven now and looking down on us, that's a much more modern concept, right? So what Paul's talking about in Thessalonians is very much that like the already dead Christians are going to meet Jesus in the clouds, but we're going to have to wait till he gets all the way to the ground. Yes. Okay. And the little bit of time difference there is relative to fucking infinity, to be clear. <laughs> yeah. But what I love about that shift in branding is it means sometimes around sometime around the 1500s, some guy raised his hand in Italy and was like, wait, so we just a wet in the fucking ground? And they were like, yeah, but then, <laughs> yep. but then you get to be in heaven forever. And he was like, 
that's a bullshit. I don't want to be a Catholic <laughs> yeah, anymore. Right, right. Uh, I want a small group of Germans, many of whom participate in group sex, to just clarify that for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and, and look, even if this did represent like proof positive that the fucking rapture was in the Bible, which again, it very doesn't. It, you, have, you would have to believe that for fucking 1800 years, people were reading this and not noticing the rapture. But even if it was like, so God in his fucking inspired ass book just tucked away the rapture in a fucking small part of one letter at the end of the second goddamn <laughs> half of the fucking end of the Bible. It's like Fuck me you. remembering to add stuff to the grocery list once. More. Oh, fuck. Uh, actually, we need diapers and wipes and diaper cream. I, I don't have room for cream. Chris CRM. Yeah, right. No, it's all in the margins. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then we get the scene where Buck has to sneak into Princeton and get that lead lined <laughs> laptop that Dirk this had is, before. This is so sad. They wanted an action scene and they were like, what about escape f from Princeton down a stairwell. <laughs> hey, hey, fellas, I love this action scene you're working on. Y'all ever seen them Scooby-Doo cartoons where he goes in one door and then the <laughs> monster comes out hey, the you other? Like to recreate you know that how Princeton has that? Almost exactly. <laughs> Could we do that but deadly serious and end it with a deadly serious dumpster crawl? Yes. Yeah, he gets out. And hey, to its credit, this is the closest anything has has come to happening at any point in the movie, right? There at least is a chase scene. Buck gets out before the bad guys and he looks around and he's like, oh, I'll never make it in time. So he jumps into this dumpster and hides there with the laptop. The bad guys come out right behind him. They don't see him. They're like, well, do you think maybe he jumped in the dumpster? One of them actually says, well, what about the dumpster? And rather than, you know, looking the guy just shoots the dumpster four times and he goes, I'm sure that would have killed. I'm sure if he was in the dumpster. Are you going to shoot all the dumpsters? No. No, just no. the one that he could. Yeah, there are 11 <laughs> fucking dumpsters in sight. He just shoots the one that bucks in. <laughs> he shoots the one that bucks in. I wrote down, please tell me the lead coated laptop was in his breast pocket and saved him <laughs> from that gunshot. And it and actually yes, saved it was. It I don't know think they did, did the breast pocket, but like it saved him. He pulls his bullet, bullet out of the bottom of the bulletproof laptop. laptop. Yes. Yes. I apologize, movie. Your lead lined laptop made a ton of sense. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then also, by the way, Chloe, we cut to Chloe. She's digging a grave, hoping that perhaps that's where the plot is buried. <laughs> So now Dr. Sam Sorbo shows up at the church to see Kay Sorbs because obviously they're trying to build a love interest between him and his wife for the next movie as well. So they, they sit down to have some dialogue about why they didn't believe in Jesus when people tried to warn them back before the rapture. Oh my God, oh, it's so naggy long. naggy spouse porn. Yes. It's so <laughs> long with this. Just like, why? Oh, why did we both ignore <laughs> the amazing magical advice for our Christian loved ones? Woe is us! <laughs> Woe, Woe is, is us, us! Stupid heathens we are! It goes on like that for so long. Just do your fucking movie. But this is the money shot, right? This is where the audience comes. The, them sitting around going like, yeah, I sure wish that I had been nicer when people tried to warn me about the very serious and real thing that is the Christian rapture. <laughs> so. uh, there's also that they want They're like, they're discussing, you know, why they weren't Christian. And finally, he asks Sam Sorbo, he's like, so why didn't you ever become Christian? And she says, and I quote, I was just never able to get there. <laughs> did you? Did he ever work the ass at all? Because that yes, helps. I That's wrote. I go. You gotta introduce toys, and I also wrote. <laughs> Connor Serbo leans his head, and she says that a lot. You gotta squeeze the bottom of your faith. Squeeze the bottom of the faith, and then you, it helps. If you're older. It's so stupid too, because she's like, "So, are you telling me you have no doubt now that you're Christian?" And he goes, "Like, no, I still have some doubt." I'm like, "Why would you still have some doubt? You're post rapture." Yeah. <laughs> he goes, "Faith isn't about having no doubt. That's knowledge." And I wrote, "Damn, pretty damning sentence there, movie." <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> oh, I could listen to this movie desperately plod around in search of profundity for the rest of my fucking life. It was so good. And then Sam Sorbo tries to cry. It's just yep. amazing. I wrote my notes. The last time I heard Faith this badly defined, Noah was on the atheist experience. <laughs> so... All right, so then we cut to Buck. He shows up at the graveyard where Chloe's digging up her grandma. Yeah, Yeah. and I'm sorry, she dug a perfect six-foot hole in a couple hours? uh, First of all, bodies are only buried about four feet deep, and you can dig that hole in four to five hours, and you're not at all surprised that I know that. That's Um, I definitely can't dig that hole in four hours. (laughs) Okay, no, yeah, you might. You would probably have to call me, yeah. Yeah. So I bet it is weird, though, that she dug out room for them to stand beside the coffin <laughs> inside the grave. That seemed excessive. So we can open it dramatically. Yeah, there's such a stupid line in here where he goes, I can't believe you dug a grave. She's like, well, I'm just like Mr. Stonegall, but at least I'm not digging my own grave. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck right? are you going for? Okay, but to be clear, grandma got buried like normal and then got zooped at the rapture because yes, grandma was yeah. a good Christian, right? Yeah. So to be clear, heaven has a bunch of horribly decomposed bodies. Thank you, Heath. Yes, you get up to heaven. You've been a Christian your whole life. Christ comes and steals you like a thief in the night, only to be greeted by a sea of hundreds yeah. of millions of dead medieval peasants just being like, oh, yeah, got that. Oh, that love Jesus. Well, right, pro bar, I did. <laughs> Yeah, well, and if they're not <laughs> skeletal fucking remains up there, then why would God need to take the bodies out of the fucking coffins? Wait a yeah. second. Wait a second. I just thought of it. During the tribulation, they're going to dig up and fuck all the former Christians. I know. It. Let's, let's, <laughs> Sarah, let's bat a little cleanup. Go down there and so, get them, okay? <laughs> yeah. And just like all of our tribulation apocalypse movies, that you get zooped, but your clothes stay yeah. there. So we see right. grandma's dress in the coffin here. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty fucking weird too, that they make you like check in for heaven completely naked, like a goddamn prison. Yeah. Why not <laughs> mm-hmm. let you have stuff like <laughs> shorts and a t-shirt show up to St. Peter's. Yes. Well, looks like you did many good deeds, but I um can't see your penis. So it's hard <laughs> it's, for St. Peter to tell. Do so you need to? <laughs> Yep, very important. So, <laughs> Did not see that coming. Oh, that bring, brings up another question. If you don't die in the rapture, if you die in normal, do you have to get undressed when you get up there? Oh, interesting. Like, you know, I'm, all the rapture people are going to come naked. Yeah, give me one second. Yeah. <laughs> so, wearing, so just strip down. Just wearing bicycle shorts and a sweater. Bend over the uh, butcher paper there. <laughs> Perfect. <Yeah. laughs> I was wearing a sweater with Tweety Bird on it when I died. <laughs> I gotta get this thing off. <laughs> So meanwhile, so we, we cut back to Pastor Barnes Church. He's he's preaching. He's got a tiny little band of people who are going to turn to Jesus, and he's preaching at them. Chloe and Buck show up, and Chloe is convinced she's going to like say the magic words and become a Christian. Buck isn't quite there yet, right? Impressive, Buck. Can I say super impressive? <laughs> you were there when she opened Grandma's grave. Yes, exactly. Yeah. You would have to believe either that the rapture happened. Or that Chloe was fucking with you, that Chloe hid the body somewhere and put the dress back there and then called you. It would be partially buried it and then called you. Yeah. So that she could fuck her grandma's corpse. Yeah. Also, we should point out that Chloe took grandma's cross necklace from her coffin. Yep. I feel like it would smell like dead, decaying flesh, wouldn't it? Well, no, that God came and cleaned all that up. Oh, okay. He gets all this. I'm just picturing Sarah Huckabee Sanders, which you have to really listen to all our shows to understand why I'm picturing that with a fucking wet vac just being like, oh man, <laughs> this blows. <laughs> I got like 80 hundred billion more people to do. <laughs> so yeah, so she's got the the debt that she goes to pray and, and turn to Jesus or whatever. She sits beside Kevin Sorbo. He looks at her necklace and has that wow you just dug up my mom to check and see if her body disappeared didn't you kind of look on his face which that's that's how good an actor he is he had that face to go to right your necklace smells like maggots honey do you mind putting that in the other room (laughs) (laughs) and so while they're jesusing though Bach is calling Chaim apparently Chaim (laughs) is a friend to his from way back so he's gonna now warn the main bad guy about the second to the main bad guy. Hey, this is really yeah. important. Important, uh, Moishi Menorah Banker. Um, so Stonegall, 
Put Hello? Spot. Yeah. Yep. One second. Let me put you on my speakerphone. Okay. Okay. Do you have it Hello? on? Do you have it on? I can't hear you. Do you, you. have it on? I can't hear you. Press, press speaker. <laughs> Can you hear it now? He must have hung up. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, <laughs> Anyone who calls a Jew, that was their favorite part of the podcast. <laughs> oh, yes. If you haven't called a Jew, you don't know what we're talking about. But trust me, that's what it's like so, to call a Jew. So Chaim goes to see Nikolai. He's like, hey, I just got off the phone with this guy. And he tells me that Stonegal is the main bad guy. So, you know, there's might be some antichristing afoot. We better look out. And the antichrist is like, oh, might be some antichristing. But oh, it's very important that you told me about that. But he's making demon noises <laughs> yes. while he's saying, yes. he's like, yes, we'll definitely <laughs> look into that. And he's like, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> did did you just do like a bull roarer noise? Like that thing no. spin no. over your head? I thought that was you. Whisper, whisper. Are you just wondering. <laughs> did you say whisper? Mm -mm. So. He, okay, that plus he literally does the slow chair turn. He does the slow I wrote in my notes. Did you do a slow turn when I walked in the room? He just totally now? does. Are you, are you fucking evil? Because until now, but the slow to why the slow turn? No, I was no. not. It's just I was the henchman staring out my window, which is behind me, and come in again. I'll sit normal. I don't like <laughs> fast turning, so I did it slow. So, boy, I'm sorry. Sorry, I, no, I am. I, am I have an inner ear thing. So. <laughs> All right, so we, we cut back to the church. Kevin Sorbo is is still filling out his uh, his rapture timeline. Chloe sure is sorry for not being Christian earlier, right? And this is where Buck comes in, and he's like, "Hey, I just wanted to let you guys know that I just warned." Nikolai Carpathia that that somebody around the UN there was the Antichrist, so we should be fine, right? Cool. And they're like, great. Do you want to learn about the timeline of the Antichrist and everything that he's doing and all of his plans first? And he's like, I don't really have time. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I get it. I know the beats, right? Horns, bowls of blood, yada, 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 yada. I'll do my best. I'll fake it. I'll fake it through. It's TV, baby. Yeah. It's TV. Come on. Well, jazz. Well, he's about and he's about to walk out, but then he notices that on Kevin Sorbo's timeline, he's written out like two Thessalonians two four or whatever, which was the password that got them into the <laughs> demonic PayPal. Right? Holy shit. Which means that the password's actually worse than security.org was giving it credit for when I checked. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's like, wait a minute, maybe I do want to learn more about this. So then we cut immediately to him explaining to us what was just explained to him in the middle of that cut, right? The only way for this to be more redundant would be for the narration to cut in over, but Buck is explaining right now what <laughs> happened in the last mm -hmm. scene to Nick Stone go. He has a fishing trip next summer, so he's not the so, <laughs> Hey, man, can you just go hang out with Braden for a little bit? Yeah, is that right? So. We, we're all set. I'm also in the movie. We got some pot from the camera guy. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's like, he's like, so wait a minute. You're telling me that uh, if he's the Antichrist, the next thing we should see is him trying to build a Jewish temple in the Middle East and a seven year peace treaty. And he's like, that's exactly what we're telling him. If that happens in the next scene, then you'll know that we're right. And he's like, oh, OK, interesting. It's interesting. I love that they do this like a detective montage almost. Mm -hmm. So they're like looking at their timeline and they're like, so yeah, this slap is the Antichrist. Did you bring that rod with you just to do that one slap? Yes, I did. That's the Antichrist right there. And they're like, yep. move his picture to the top of the Rico chart and they're like figuring <laughs> it all out. It's so stupid. But they've got the wrong Antichrist. They think Stonegal is the Antichrist. Very, very important. Mm. So he goes to, he's got to go meet the UN people. So he's like, pray for me. And then after he walks out, Pastor Barnes says, that boy's going to need a lot more than prayer. And I'm like, why? Prayer is omnipotent magic for you idiots. <laughs> right? Like, isn't it? Like, it's it's infinity times infinity powers. But yep. apparently he's going to need more than that. <laughs> it is, yeah. Chloe follows him out. And she's like, do you sure you don't want to become a Christian before this movie's over? Because you could die. And he's like, no. And, and, and they have a big romantic hug. Yeah. And she gives him the shitty jewelry from dead grandma. Right. She's like, promise yes. me you'll wear this. So that we can get $8 from fucking Zales and an Instagram plug or whatever the fuck we negotiated. <laughs> so. And then he says, and then he says, I love you 
Chloe steal and leaves. Yes. There has to be such a long outtake reel for him trying to do that. One hundred percent. We're watching the sunset behind them and rise yeah, right, again. Right. <laughs> so okay. So then we cut to the UN before the big meeting with everybody. We have Buck meeting with Chaim and finding out that they are building a Jewish temple in the Middle East and signing a seven-year peace treaty. Yeah, and look, we've watched a lot of apocalypse movies, a lot of the Antichrist has risen to power, and I'm always interested how they handle the temple being rebuilt on the Dome of the Rock thing. Yeah, uh-huh. Right, and so for this movie, and this is a first, I will say. Well, it's not, because this is this is what they, this, that's what they did in the uh, other version of the same movie. When they oh, that's the, right, they did yeah. in the other, yes, that's true, but what they come up with, no, 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 what we realized is we're going to put it next to the Dome of the Rock. It's going to be next door. We're going to have a nice fence. It's going to be great. Nobody's going to know. There will be like, no problem. You ever problem. watch like a sitcom where they put a little piece of yeah. white tape down the center? <laughs> We're going to do that with the Holy Land. You know how all the fences in, uh, you know, Palestine, Israel, it goes really it works good. Out, We're going to do that. It works out really well, you know, and so <laughs> we're going to just do that. But this is where Buck realizes that the Christians were right all along. So he runs into the bathroom and finds Jesus. And let me just say, if you find Jesus in a public restroom, you should let him finish and then give your life over to him uh, yeah. once he's dried his hands. But <laughs> yeah. but he has the big, like, looking in the mirror and crying about how he loves Jesus and Jesus take the wheel and all of that <laughs> shit. Forgive me. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe I keep my job just because... In case that was a problem for me that later also on. Would I don't know. Great. <laughs> Maybe a way to delete a text message from the other person's phone after you send it. I don't know. <laughs> Those are my three prayers. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Do you get three wishes, right? Are you still shitting? <laughs> uh, and then uh and then he he leaves uh, Connor a voicemail telling him that he did in fact find Jesus. So he's good. Hey Connor. I know this doesn't seem likely that I would call you. A cameraman? Please <laughs> Not even. Uh-huh, uh-huh, but I'm excited, whatever it is. But, um, let's do it. You're, uh, I'm leaving you a voicemail, man. Stop answering. Um, <laughs> no, no, but I'm in, I'm in the voicemail, too. <laughs> oh. You're part of the ending, so I'll see you. Nice, I'm not excited. All right, excellent. <laughs> I'll see you then. I gotta say, I was excited because Sorbo's kid is having a star turn right now, and Fuck I think that yes. is great so fucking for the podcast. Loving it. Look, yep. look. He's already brought us so much joy by surprising his father with TikTok challenges. The least we can do is feature him on our podcast. Absolutely. Absolutely. We hope for we hope for a long career from you, Brayden. Brayden, this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. We have a race car bed with your name on it. I'm not even going to say. You have to share it with this guy, but yeah. Yeah, you do. That'll be fine. So, okay. So Buck and Connor meet up for the for the big ending now. He's going to, the fucking narrator might as well just be cutting in saying, ooh, ooh, wait until you see this next part. You're going to love this. <laughs> so, but he goes to the UN meeting, you know, to the big evil circle table. Private UN meeting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. So for the world domination PayPal meeting that we're setting up, uh, here's what I was thinking. Crazy circle desk inside a big arena. Would, oh, would that yeah. oh, crazy. be a good Ooh, optically a, thing to do? I love that so that yes. nobody watching can see, but also the mm -hmm. people on stage can't see either. I <laughs> right. That's really good. That's what I was thinking. They wouldn't be able to see. You're saying we would place several countries with their backs to the audience? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 They'll have a big awesome. argument about it, but we'll tell them like you're a shitty backs country. Nobody cares. to audience. <laughs> uh, yeah. Already putting Zimbabwe there. By the way, I was curious. I was like, does the UN look like that in real life? And I checked. It kind of does. And they should stop doing that. It does. Yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah, like that. right. I wrote like, like Noel, no good guys ever sat at a table <laughs> shaped like that. So yeah, they probably should stop doing that. But yeah, so he's explaining all the plot. Now, we don't want to like sit through that yet again. So the narrator cuts in and basically goes, you know, yada, yada, yada. And then and we cut to Buck wrapping up and he's like, and that's why I know that Stonegal is the Antichrist. And then we we get this weird fucking moment. Now, I'll just explain to the audience what's happening here. Nikolai Carpathia has hypnotized everybody using his Antichrist powers and is explaining to them what they're going to think happened after the hypnotism. But what we see is him just walking around going like, in a moment, there will be a shootout and there will be a, this guy will pull out his gun and he'll try to shoot Sorry. this guy and that guy. Question. Uh, you, you said shootout and you're doing like a pace and talk. It's pretty evil. I heard a demon echo thing and like a hissy thing. Are, 
Do you guys hear that? It's, I feel like he might be evil. <laughs> Nobody? Don't interrupt. What, what it actually comes across, Seth, that I think is so funny is it seems like the actor. What's the actor's name? Oh, hell, I don't know. Uh, it seems like the actor who plays Nikolai Carpavia is doing a walkthrough for the movie. <laughs> Right? right, it seems like the actors like. So then, there's going to be a shootout here, and there. But then the scene just ends. He's putting like tape X's on the ground. Well, right, it's like they didn't have the money to shoot the fucking gunfight. Yes, yeah. So, <laughs> but then he just pulls out a gun and he shoots Neil McDonough's character because they couldn't get Neil McDonough back. Let's be honest. And and then everybody walks away thinking that the thing that he just said is what happened. Everybody that is except for the guy who just turned his life over to Jesus and therefore has armor of God powers. Oh, yeah. He's got the Magneto helmet of God that blocks yeah. the mind yeah. control. Quick thing, though. There's so many better ways to do this if you have mind control over the entire world, right? Yeah. You don't have to, like, murder a bunch of diplomats, do any of this. You can just... Do whatever you want with the mind control. That would be that think, would, yeah, you yeah. you'd think. <laughs> also, sorry, I, I hate to add corrections on the air, but um Buck, even though he's turned his wife over to Jesus, he's not the only one. Oh, you're right. You see through Nikolai's lies. No, Connor, the <laughs> cameraman. <laughs> the, Sorbo. the coach's Connor. son who is the pitcher right now. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes. He <laughs> also <laughs> has the armor he's of God. He's literally bouncing on his toes while the Antichrist explains his way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's got a oh, 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 no. oh, he's got a gun. Oh, oh no. Do? What's Stop. he going to do in the movie? I'm in a movie. Hey, shut up. We can all hear you. Shut up. You shut up. My dad's the director. <laughs> <laughs> so they all shuffle out thinking that the thing Carpathia just said is, is what happened. And Buck keeps asking him, hey, guys, what did you see happen? And they're like, the thing that Carpathia said uh, is what happened. And he's like, oh, no, evil mind control powers, right? Okay, so nobody else had anything like perpendicular, like the cross necklace that he had? Nobody nobody was a Christian in the oh, entire UN meeting? No, yeah, clearly not. Well, not a true Christian. Obviously, Heath, come on. Okay. So Buck is like, oh, well, I'm going to have to enact a big thing in Act, in act 3. Otherwise, there will be have been no plot at all. This movie's almost over, right? <laughs> so he calls Connor. He calls Chloe. They all put it all together. And what they're going to do, Nikola Carpathia is about to give his big speech about adopting the one world currency. But they're going to hack into all the world's fucking TV stations <laughs> again. Okay. And he's going to give a speech. Uh, Bucker Carlson's going to give a speech about how Jesus is the one true Lord and Savior. How many Christian movies have we done that they couldn't think of anything but like hack the world channel of TV? <laughs> yep. I'm the TV now. And now we give a speech. I am. I'm the TV. It's so fucking dumb. Yeah. <laughs> But how much do you guys want this to happen? Like, how amazing would it be if during Joe Biden's next speech about infrastructure, fucking a sweaty, shirtless Tucker Carlson <laughs> just breaks into the MSNBC? Theme. It's all hey, lies. Everybody. Jesus, I have a screenshot. I want you to point a camera at a screenshot of some Bible verses, <laughs> like your grandma <laughs> taking a picture of a picture in an album she won't take out. <laughs> so, I farted. I'm gonna. I'm gonna censor that out. It's fine. <laughs> Keep going. So then, so he escapes, he has to escape from the TV station. We have this car chase where uh, the henchmen that fired at the dumpster earlier are chasing him. And it's one of these great, we've seen several of these, but it's one of these great, like, we cannot afford to dent these vehicles chase scenes. So they're on this, like, empty 11 lane highway. Did we get the insurance for our one hour rental of this Kia Rio? No? Okay. So he, yeah, they, they have the chase scene. And he, he just barely escapes and he, he gets to an airfield and he had a plane waiting with Sorbo in it, of course, at a large rural airfield minutes from Midtown Manhattan. From Manhattan? That's where he goes. Yes, yeah. they were in goddamn New York. Goddamn, where they where do they find a fucking empty 11 lane highway anywhere yeah. near New York you know. City? And, and what I love here is they get in the plane, they start to take off and the van continues to chase them. The, yeah. the bad guys what? in the van are like, I could catch up to the airplane. Give me a second. <laughs> if I go as fast as it, I'll fly too, I'm sure. I will just so. hit. With, on the count of three, we both go like a little jump. And then we... <laughs> made it. You have mushrooms? Did so. we put the bomb in their plane? Damn it. I knew we used our bomb too soon. 
<laughs> so yeah, so but Buck gets in the plane, they take off, they get away just in time. The narrator cuts in to say, and if you thought this movie was exciting, well, you didn't. But the next movie, though, now that we've set it all up, maybe we'll have the budget to do some exciting stuff in the next one. And the movie closes over footage of them leap doing chief Jesus leaflets out of their plane. Yes. Yeah, they, they, they fly away and Kevin Sorbo was like, this looks like a good spot. And they start just pushing those pamphlets from earlier out. Now, the, when he says this looks like a good spot, he means Manhattan. <laughs> Manhattan, New York City. They, they drop like 30 pamphlets out the window of their tiny little airport. <laughs> yeah, they, land, they land in three square feet. Yeah, and then yeah. they show... The people of New York City being so fucking psyched. So people in New York City are like, oh my God, somebody dropped garbage from this building up above us. Let's read it right now. Yes, get it, get it. <laughs> this makes a lot of I love I it. I bet this is about something cosmically important. <laughs> I hope someone hands me this later in person. This would be amazing. Yeah, it would be so I much easier. I in that person's mouth. I just wanted the movie to end with all of them falling in the Hudson River and them going like, yeah, the winds are really fucking strong up here. Uh, <laughs> fuck. All right. Well, obviously, we need more of this in our lives. There are 14 fucking books. We could get a dozen more of these fucking movies. So any ideas for the tagline for the next one? Uh, left behind two, three. George Santos was right about everything he ever <laughs> said. <laughs> yes, he was. Uh, left behind three, Connor's way. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of Left Behind, Rise of the Antichrist, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to paint another X on the pavement for next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, after the highest highs of this week, there's only one thing that can fill my fix for nonsense, and that's the anti-psychiatry Scientology documentary, <laughs> no. Psychiatry. An industry of death. Oh, no, int that'll be fun. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 403 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing the Citation Data, DD Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot giving people drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Dominator Analytics went on to rig a bunch more elections after getting $787.5 million from WGN. Braden Sorbo went on to assistant manage a Starbucks. Kevin Sorbo has plenty of time to make the rest of the Left Behind movies, guys. Just, just hit him up on Cameo. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. So sad. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.